Thank you. Um, so we also know that you'll be delivering the keynote address later this month at UC Irvine's uh, Peace Week, and that's your alma mater. Um, and that's, that's one of the compassion and action projects of, of two of my fellow um, 2013 Dalai Lama fellows. So can you tell us um, a little bit about why you accepted this invitation to speak at UC Irvine's Peace Week? And um, give us a sneak preview of maybe some of your planned remarks. Sure. Um, well, I don't know if you've seen, there's an interesting book by a fellow by the name of Adam Grant called Give and Take, and uh, 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 he makes this comment that he always says yes if he can help somebody, or, or and in some ways that's what I do. Uh, you know, if there's, if people feel that uh, my presence or talking can inspire themselves or individuals to service to others, if at all possible, I try to do it. Now, my wife's not always happy about that, but uh, that's what my intent is. Um, and I think it's important to try and do this because what happens sometimes is that many people will say, well, the reason I don't really reach out to people is because I'm busy or it's too hard or there's so much suffering. But my own experience is <clears throat> that each of us has within our capacity, regardless of how much money you have, where you live, your stage in life, to improve the life of another person every day, at least one person. It's not hard. It could be as simple as uh, you're getting a cup of coffee, coffee and with intent you say thank you for serving me. And those types of interaction to those people are critically important because so many people ignore them. Or even if somebody calls you up and says, listen, can you help me do X, Y, or Z? Or as an example, um, just intervene in somebody's life. I'll give you an example since I mentioned coffee. There was a young lady uh, who uh, was a barista at Starbucks. And I would see her every day, and I would go in. And uh, we started chatting, and I took an interest in who she was, because she was nice. And, uh, so I started chatting with her, and she's a single mother with a nine-year-old daughter. And uh, her dream was to go to medical school. But, uh, you know, she really didn't have any connections, she didn't have an academic background. She had had, obviously, this child when she was young. She's working at Starbucks, trying to just make it. <clears throat> so I talked to her, and I spent some time with her. And I said, let me help you. Um, so I looked over her material and stuff, I helped her uh, with how she presented herself and wrote some letters for her. And she's now a medical student. Uh, now, you could say, you know, and, and think about all the people you run around, you interact with who are in those types of positions, who have an aspiration, a dream. And did it cost me a whole lot to do that? Yeah, a few hours of my time. Uh, uh, but look at the profound effect it had on her life. Similar to what this person did, my own interaction. And this was the power of each of us to have an effect on somebody. In fact, uh, actually to tell you another story, uh, the, there was a kid when I started Seek Care who worked at Google. And I went over there to talk to them about uh, uh, some work we were going to do together. And I met this kid. And uh, we started chatting. And he knew all about neuroscience. He knew all the major investigators. Very bright kid. And I was like amazed. In fact, frankly, to be honest with you, he knew more than I. Uh, because, you know, this isn't my field. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, I, I think you should come to work for me. Now, at that time, Seacare was pretty much just me. And uh, then I found out he, uh, he was 28, he um, actually hadn't graduated from college, was studying neuroscience, had a very fragmented academic career, but he had started back again part-time. And nonetheless, I still hired him. Uh, um, and you can only imagine what it took to, and because I made him our program coordinator, you can imagine what it took for me to get him to be hired by Stanford as a program coordinator as a high school graduate. <laughs> to make a long story short, though, that young man was fundamentally in many ways responsible for our success at Seacare. 
because of his enthusiasm, his uh, knowledge, his connections. And that young man now, uh, because I told him he couldn't stay with me, uh, that he had to move forward, he got his undergraduate degree, uh, he started doing research at Stanford in a very high-powered lab, and he's now uh, a PhD student at Princeton. So again, that interaction, that recognition of his potential, of his enthusiasm for who he was as a person, regardless of all this other stuff, or regardless of the fact that, oh, and what his job at Google was? Massage therapist. Okay. It's being able to look at people <clears throat> and see what's in their heart and not make a judgment about external stuff that's meaningless. And this is the challenge for all of us. And this is what separates us from people, is because there is a tendency for us to look at others and judge them based on either how they're dressed or the circumstances of how you met them. But worth is not about that. Worth is about what's in your heart. And one of the most important things that you can develop is being able to see in people's hearts and make your judgments based on that and not on uh, things that uh, aren't particularly useful.